Coming up on this episode, I review the 2021 film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. A. D. N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys and welcome back to another film review. So in this case, I like I mentioned, I'm going to be reviewing the film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So before we get into it, I do want to stick a spoiler alert warning right at the top. Just because over the course of this review, I will most likely cover some plot points, uh, re- tease some or release some spoilery content, especially with the mid-credits and end credit scene. So... Um, if you haven't seen the film or don't want to be spoiled by it, definitely watch the film first and come back to the review. But if you don't mind either way, then definitely take a listen. So overall, I will start off the review with the film being a very well done coming of age film for Shang-Chi. So he is um, raised by his parents. His father is a thousand year old um, former warlord who is converted by his bomb a i guess semi formerly immortal guardian of a doorway that potentially could unleash uh, evil onto the earth is a soul eating dine uh, soul eating dragon so overall it starts off well but the sins of his father's past come back to haunt him where some rival gang members kill shang chi's mom and his dad falls into his old ways ends up training his son to become a lethal killer and ultimately give him the opportunity to reclaim um get revenge on the guy who killed his mom which he ultimately does but he wants to give up his life because he realizes that that's not the life for him it's not what his mom would have wanted and tries to escape from his past so overall the overall story arc becomes is very well done it generally gives us an uh conti- or it gives us a, another perspective as far as not necessarily a multiverse but some of the supernatural universal galaxy wide um features that are in the universe so the ten rings are another sort of calling beacon so um i'll get to that in a little bit but overall the film was very well portrayed it felt very much like a mix between black panther and crouching tiger hidden dragon so it it brings kind of the a uh, sense at least from my outside perspective which is a very big um bold text there but um chinese culture as far as um kind of a mix between like you know underworld the yakuza um the uh, the traditions of uh, ways of a people but then also some of that extra spirituality as far as nature and elements and um you know earthly like tying yourself to earth kind of thing like a whole mother nature kind of vibe so all of that tied together very well and I liked how they tied that all in from the beginning of the film when Shang Chi's parents met and how his mom defeated his dad with the, her ways, and then they tie it together at the end with Shang Chi's aunt teaching him how to defeat his dad and using that same power. So it also kind of brings in a little bit of the whole Doctor Strange vibe that he has, like he has the tools he needs and he has an understanding to do different things and. It just needs to be unlocked or he just has to have a different way of looking at things like that so overall i liked all of that the presentation was well done um and of course i had to look up some of the actors in the film notably the guy who plays shang chi because i was thinking that he looks a lot like jung from kim's convenience and it turns out that it was or it is actually him so in watching the film the early parts with him and aquafina um being um valet drivers was kind of a nice little touch i don't know if that was intentional as far as because jung was on kim's convenience and he worked for a rental car company or if that was generally going to be part of the storyline but i liked that that little touch and then you know 
the immature part of it running um, and kind of not really going anywhere. So all of that kind of work and then having that hidden past and the reason why he's doing the thing he's doing is not because he's running from any or not because he's trying to be underachieving but he's trying to uh, run from his past live a normal life and because he doesn't want to live the life that he was given but ultimately has to come back to it because he's the only one who can stop what his father is doing and then of course they have the whole trope which in gen and it's I say trope just because it's done, been done before not because it's anything that was done poorly but we have the whole thing where he has a younger sister who he had to leave behind to um, accomplish get her to get the revenge on his mom's killer but ends up not coming back because he realizes that what he's doing is not the life that she would have wanted them to leave live but then his sister ends up becoming the ruler of her own fight club of sorts so I actually thought that was a very nice touch and they tied it all together at the end that um, Jung is not or not Jung, but Shang-Chi is not gonna leave his sister for a second time and that they're gonna live together the only thing that was confusing towards the end is um, or I guess what I took out of the ending of the film is that it looks like um, Shang-Chi's sister is gonna take over the Ten Rings so it sounds I don't know if she's gonna remake the organization in her image or if she's gonna take the, her fight club to a whole new level um, to me it seems like the, she's going to take over the Ten Rings which um, would be an interesting take notably because the Ten Rings organization I guess is an organization that um, shaped um, the fate of different nations and governments over the course of the years so I'm curious to see if they end up making the Shang-Chi 2 and rounding that out or if they make a Ten Rings you know mini series to follow what became uh, to do an original like a introduction to the Ten Rings over the years and then what they're doing going forward so that all is kind of left me with more questions that could potentially be answered in the future but all that brings me to that point that I like that they rounded out the whole idea of the Ten Rings in this film so we were first introduced to the Ten Rings in Iron Man 1 when Tony Stark gets captured by the um, bad guys as part of um, the what's his name um, Obadiah's pl plot to take over the company and then later in Iron Man 3 with the Mandarin um, taking trying to um, get rid of Tony Stark and then um, destroy stuff and all of that um, all of that stuff especially with the um, fire stuff and I'm drawing a blank on what all that's called at the moment but um, I like that we have the um, revelation that Shang-Chi's father is a, was a real Mandarin and he used various puppets over the years to make to be the face of the Mandarin, be the face of the Ten Rings so that he could continue to work anonymously and in the shadows. But of course the biggest revelation in my the favorite part of the film aside from the interactions between Shang-Chi and Aquafina was um, Trevor Slattery showing up, the guy who was the face of the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. So overall I like that he they had they put decide they put in a side uh, redemption arc for him that he's now no longer on drugs and um, and Shang Chi's father was dis or basically saved him but it was keeping him there for some reason um, probably as I guess is to use him in the future for his acting skills I guess but I I just liked the general um, introduction or generally having him in the film to round out that whole storyline. Um, and of course the interactions with between him and that weird butterfly dog character I, I don't know what it was I, I know they briefly mentioned it but I didn't quite catch it but I like the interactions with that with him and that creature and that he originally thought it was a hallucination but that he had not been hallucinating so all in all good stuff there now as far as the confusing part and the questions that I had it was all related to or the, it was singularly related to the mid credits and end credits scene where we have um wong captain marvel and um bruce talking about how the ten rings are made up of a variety of 
different elements, but it's acting like a beeper or pager to somewhere in the universe. They're not quite sure what's going on, but they need to figure out what it's doing. And then Captain Marvel has to suddenly leave, so they're left to figure out what's going on. So that that all was fine. It, it kind of reminisces back to the pager thing with to inter, at the end of um, Infinity War with calling on Captain Marvel or Sam Jackson calling Captain Marvel and that whole pager. So it felt kind of reminiscent of that, but kind of more of the um, supernatural galaxy pager system, I guess. So the Ten Rings were not or could potentially not have been part of um or on earth originally could have been part of something else so kind of like a new version potentially a new version or element as part of maybe what the infinity stones are or something that is even more powerful or supernatural than the infinity stones so i'm kind of curious to see what all that is going to be about how that potentially ties into maybe the multiverse or uh, what Phase 4 is going to be in the MCU related to um, more of the galaxy and the Eternals and some of that more supernatural stuff as far as the um, galaxy and universes um, being more than what we initially thought and more than what Thanos was explaining with the Infinity Stones. Um, so the whole confusing, so like I said, that's all not, that all was not the confusing part. It's a good lead in potentially to the rest of phase four in the MCU. But the confusing part was, um, Bruce Banner being in his irregular human form rather than the Bruce or rather than the smart Hulk form, which I thought was kind of confusing because it seems like this film takes place after Endgame because, and I couldn't quite make it out and I had to read about it after um, because I was trying to find out when Shang-Chi is supposed to take place, but I guess um, Bruce Banner's arm was still in a crutch, but if it was still in a crutch, that means it takes place after um, Endgame, so why is he not in his Smart Hulk form anymore? So I guess that's going to be something that they explain down the road, maybe in another film, maybe in you know Spider-Man or um, Doctor Strange 2 or some other Marvel film, but I now I'm curious why he's no longer Smart Hulk or maybe it's going to be related to the potential She-Hulk TV series that maybe um, he, I was reading one theory where it's potentially, he's potentially unable to heal in the Smart Hulk form so he has to revert back to Bruce Banner in order for him, his arm to heal properly or something like that so that was the only really confusing part, so I'm kind of intrigued to see what they have they explain that or how they present all of that. But in general, I, um, if so, basically that's all there is for that. But so if I was to grade Shang Chi, I would give it about an A minus, maybe even an A. It was a really good film. It was a good time. There's very little I could say bad about it. Um, I was reading some of the trivia after I watched the film and apparently Donnie Yen was supposed to play the role of Shang-Chi's father. Donnie Yen is the guy who played um, the blind guardian of the wills in Rogue One. I want to say his name was Chiru, but I think that was, I think that was his name. Bose was the other guy. Um, and then he's the star of Ip Man or the Ip Man franchise. So. Um, and I got to thinking if him or the guy who actually plays Shang-Chi's father in the film would have been a better uh, role. And I think as far as the guy they um, cast as Shang-Chi's father in the film was good as far as the fatherly roles, the expressions, um, the the fear, the, the worry, the anger and all of that I think in general worked well for that half of the portrayal. but. As far as the fighting scenes and the martial arts and all of that goes, I think Donnie Yen would have pulled it off better um, just because of um, his martial arts skill. I want to say as far as the expression goes, I, I mean, I'm sure he could have pulled it off. He could have, as far as playing, you know, a thousand year old uh, father figure and warlord, I think he could have pulled it off. Um, just because as far as going into the depths of sorrow and sadness, I think it was around Ip Man 3 or 4 when he... Something, I forget if he... This was around the time when he loses his wife or that's when he's about the time when he learns about his illness. I forgot which way it was now, but... Um, I think in either case, he could have pulled it off, but 
just from his past portrayals of being a stoic warrior. The guy they cast as Shang-Chi played better as the father figure and having those facial expressions to show the the um, falling into the depths of sadness and fear and anger and all that worked out better. But thinking of Donnie Yen in the same role, the martial arts would have come out better in my opinion. So I'm kind of bummed that we didn't get to see him in this role here. Um, I'm guessing it's probably because he didn't want to play the villain role, which is my initial guess and suspicion as to that. But um, that's neither here nor there. The In general, the casting was good. I liked all of it. Um, in general, it was a good, well-paced movie. The, the two and a half hours went by pretty quickly. I think there was very little time that... Uh, and I don't th recollect that there was any part in the film where I found that I was wondering how much time was left in the film or where they're going with the story or anything like that. It was paced well enough to the point where I sat through the whole film and didn't think about when the film was going to end. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback or anything like that or want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that good stuff. And of course by supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01 you get some bonus content, extra episodes and things like that. So um, there was a recent review done for a couple of video games so you get that. You get um, updates for upcoming content, so there's that post um, at the beginning of September. So um, by supporting the show on Patreon, you get our access to posts like that as well. But that's all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.